so we can could find could find out what is the force offered by this number BC. Okay. But how does this FBC relate to the P? H and B should be equal to each other, right? Why? Then to answer the question we need to look at this number BC. Okay. So force uh, a member BC gives this member BA a force FBC. Okay. Then in another around, we can find a reaction which is the force A, which is the uh, member FBA gives a reaction to the member BC. Then which it should be in this direction. Okay. Member this FBA. Correct. Two of them should be action and reaction. This one is the uh, force given by BC to BA. This one is the force of uh, given by BA to BC. So two of them should be in the opposite direction and I have the same magnitude. Okay. So from BC itself, okay. For BC itself, it is it has a force given by given by BA, okay. It has also a force given by <coughs> is in contact with BD, right? It may have also have a force given by BD. Yeah, but practically we know that because the FBC is also a two force member, okay. So this FBD will not distribute on this one. So this FBD is zero. See? Means the FBD just now is all distributed on this member. So FBD will not distribute any force on this BC member anymore. Okay. So here FBD is zero. Okay. So other forces acting on this other than this okay, FBA now let's look at a point C. Okay, point C is in contact with member C D and also the force P, right? So force P definitely it should be in this direction. How about member C D? Component C D will also give a force to this to this um, B C, right? So the direction may be in this direction or in other directions. But since it's a two force number, the direction cannot be the other directions. So the direct, uh, so the force given by C D to B C will only be possible in these two directions, uh, in these horizontal directions. But what's the magnitude? We don't know. Okay. Assume that, uh, in fact, it should be zero. Why? Okay. In fact, this force. The horizontal force given by this member C D to member B C should be zero. Why? The horizontal force. We we'll assume here there's a horizontal force given by C D to B C because we cannot confirm. We will assume that it is. But we need to prove that this one is actually zero. Why? Because if it is not a zero, okay. Look at this two force member, if it is not a zero. What will happen for this one? You will rotate, right? If it is in this direction, you will result in the rotating of this member. So this force given by C T will simply equal to zero. Okay. So now we can see this only force P as the resultant force from the C and the force P A as a resultant force from the from the point B here. So in order to maintain a force equilibrium, what we can have is this FBA actually just equals to P in magnitude. So in the end, here, we FBC find here equals to FBA find here also equals to P here. That's the way we find out the answer. Maybe you want to digest. Sorry? P 
no, P is equals to FBD's horizontal component. Yeah, it which means FBD times this cosine <coughs> angle, cosine theta. Linkage is not only composed of uh, different components, but also of the joints themselves. Okay. So when we analyze force, one of our very important techniques, which is easier for our understanding, is to analyze the force on the joints themselves. Okay. Because the joints, in the end, they are supposed to be static equilibrium as well. Okay. So what we can have here, so in this way, um, the other members, they have their forces on the joints. Okay. All the members will have forces on the joints. Now, instead of you consider this bar have a force on, uh, on this member, and this bar have a force on this member, you can just simply consider this. This joint has a force on this member. Okay. As a, this, the force on the joint will be the resultant force of this force and this force. So that's the easier way for your consideration. Okay. For example, here, for bar B, D, right? Actually, you will have force from this member and this member to bar B, D. Okay. But actually, you just need to consider as this, this, this joint itself has a force on bar B, D. Okay. Which is the, the force here is the resultant force of this, of a, uh, Member this one and member this one. Yeah. <coughs> okay, so every time we can just consider the joints. For example, here, let's look at a joint B. Joint B, as we know, the force inside BD is a tensile force. Okay. So it's like this B is trying to pull pull this. BD, right? Yeah. So in another way around, we can say that it's this joint trying to push this, or this bar trying to push this joint in here. So this link, we have one force here, which is FBD. Yeah, we know both its direction and its magnitude. Right. Okay. For this link, we also have forces from member BA. Yeah maybe going down or going upwards, but it's definitely in x direction as this is a two, two force member. Yeah, so it must be in x direction. We assume it is going down first. When you say the joint itself will exert a force on the two force member, right? Yeah. So when